One of my subscribers reached out to me to ask how I go about bending tubes and if I could offer some tips on how to bend hard tubes for the water-cooled builds. <laughs> so today we're going to look at how to do a double 90 degree bend on an acrylic tube. Bending hard tube for your water-cooled build can seem like a daunting task at first, but with some patience and perseverance, it'll pay off and it looks great. So for tip number one, measure once, measure twice, then measure again. You can't measure too many times. Doing the bend is actually pretty easy, but if you mess it up and you get it out of alignment, then bending it back isn't really an option. You can never truly get it as straight as it originally was. Now, I'm not much of an artist, but I prefer to use grid paper when I'm laying out the measurements for my builds. So for example, let's say you have a radiator and you have your graphics card. And let's say you want to plumb your tubing into the graphics card from the radiator. So you're going to have a straight tube, you're gonna have a 90, and then you're gonna have a second 90 for that tube, something like that. So this is where you have two 90 degree bends and you wanna do them so that they line up properly with your radiator and with your GPU. If your measurements are out just by a little bit, you may have trouble getting your tubes to align with the fittings. So, how do we fix that? Well, one easy way to do that is measuring. So I suggest using a measuring tape or a ruler or anything that you can use to get inside your case and measure around. So for example, you'll want to measure the distance in height between your center of your tube and the center of your tube on your radiator. So let's say this height is four inches. So if your measurement is four inches, what I recommend doing is actually drawing that out on grid paper. So on grid paper, what you can do is you can say, hey, my tube from the center of the tube to the center of the tube is gonna be four inches. And again, this is just an example, but you're gonna measure that out. So your tube is essentially going to be here. It's gonna bend at a 90. It's a very terrible bend. And then you're gonna be center of your tube here. I always recommend measuring center of tube to center of tube. So now you have a template. You know that when you're done bending your tube, it has to align center here and center here. So you can actually start to align how you want your bends to fit to make this work. Now, this tube is gonna be extended all the way across to your radiator. So to make this work, you're not actually gonna cut the tubes at this point. You're going to take your tube and you're going to bend it at each point in the 90 so that you'll actually end up cutting off a little bit of each end of the tube to get it to fit into your fittings. Never cut your tube till you're done your bends. Do all your bends, then cut your tube. That way you can make sure that you cut off small chunks at a time so that you never end up in a situation where now your tube is too short. So I'm gonna to have to bend it here and here. Using a mandrel tool, I can actually identify how I want that to bend. And I can kind of locate it right around the center of where I want the tube to be. And I can bend, draw my bends here. And again, you could redo this as many times as you want. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it gives you a good gauge for what your bend is gonna look like. So here, you can see along this line here is where I'm gonna be bending my tube. And if I look at my actual tube, I'll have to follow that kind of a bend, center to center. And again, I'm gonna add a little extra length just so that I can create my bend. So if I look at my mandrel tool, it's going to be a little bit over half. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bend it. Once I have the first bend, then I'll line it up with my template and figure out where my second bend has to start. What I'll typically do is add a little mark at the center of about where the bend needs to be. Now the nice thing is if you don't get it perfect the first time, you can heat it up again and bend it a little bit. So let's go ahead and get that first 90 degree bent and then we'll work on getting that to align with our template. So to do the bending, we'll fill a small container with some soapy water. We'll get our little silicone bending tube and we'll just soak that in the soapy water so that we can easily insert that into our tubing. 
because you're gonna need the bending cord if you wanna do this right. So what you wanna do is slowly heat up a three to four inch area on your tube by just slowly turning the tube and moving it around. We're gonna do our first bend right around here, and that'll leave enough on the end for us to cut it to size if we were to need to put this into a fitting. Now heating up the tube, you have to be very patient. It can take time. This is acrylic tube, so I'm using 530 degrees Fahrenheit, and you have to be patient with it. You'll see actually the water inside will start kind of bubbling and boiling, and you'll know that that's kind of getting close to the right temperature, but you still have to be careful with it because you don't want to get it too hot, and if it's too cold, it won't bend properly. So we're gonna heat this up for a couple of minutes before we attempt to bend. The water inside the tube is starting to boil a little bit, and if I put just a little bit of pressure on the tube, I can see that it is getting a little bit malleable, so I should be able to start bending it relatively soon. And you'll know that you can start bending it if you just apply a little bit of pressure, you'll see it starts to kind of bend a little bit. So we're gonna kind of free-handedly bend this, and just kind of force it very slowly. There's, there's no actual pressure being applied, very light pressure being applied. We're gonna keep spreading the heat evenly across the bend so that we don't get any weird bubbles or, or uh, crinkles in the bend. And it'll slowly start to take shape into that 90 degree that we're looking for. And I actually won't use the mandrel right, uh, right up until the end. And you can do 90 degree bends completely freehand. Actually, a lot of the bends that I do are usually freehand, but I like to use the mandrels for 90s and 180s because it gives you more of a consistent bend. So I'm starting to see just a little bit that the, uh, the far end needs to heat up a bit for it to continue bending kind of uniformly. So I'm gonna let that heat up a little bit closer to further down the bend because you want the bend to look nice and uniform if you bend it too much, you'll get kind of a fold in the tube or kind of a bit of a, a hard spot or a blunt spot on the tube uh, where you kind of wanted it to bend, but it's not as smooth. So you just take your time to try to get a nice even bend. We're almost at that 90 degree mark now. So at this point, if you want to have that mandrel 90, this is where you're going to need to bring in your bending tool we can see that we're not quite in line with what the bending tool can provide. So I'm gonna heat this up just a little bit more, and then we're gonna actually put it into the bending tool right into the little template so that we get that nice 90 that we're looking for. That's actually not bad. We could have gone a little bit sharper in the 90, but the tool is gonna to at least ensure that the 90 coming in and the 90 going out are uniform. So there you go, there's your 90, and so now we'll do the second 90 and then we'll tie it up to our template. All right, so we've got our 90 set up on our template now. So what we want to do is we're going to actually have to bend this tube to line up as close as we can to our template. So to do that, we know that our bend's going to have to probably start right around here, so we can see how long this bend is. We'll probably have to start the bend here and then bend the tube out to here. So one of the things I try to do is mark kind of a center point of where I know the center of my bend is gonna be, which will be right about here. So that's kind of where I want my center of my bend to be. So I'm just gonna hold on to that. You can mark it with a Sharpie and wipe it off later with some uh, Sharpie cleaner or Sharpie remover, but uh, I'm just gonna hold on to it there. I know approximately where this is gonna to have to go. One of the things I'm gonna do is when I'm bending this for the next part, I'm actually gonna use this template as my guide. So I'll be heating it up and as I'm heating up, I'm gonna bend the tube and bend it so that it lines up here. It's gonna to wanna to bend into a natural 90 anyway if I'm careful with it, and I technically won't have to use the template at all, although I can if I really want to. You can see the template doesn't exactly fit. So to get the template to fit, it's gonna be hard to use that template and get a perfect fit. So I might actually just freehand this one. The template got me started with my first 90, and now I can kind of roll on my second 90, aiming to have the center of the tube matching up with the center of the tube here. So if I line everything up properly, when I'm doing my bends, I should end up with the tube here. So I'll go ahead and heat this up, and I'm gonna line it up to the template as I'm heating it up to try to get the result. This is gonna be really hard to film, so I'll try to do it in two stages. I'll heat it, I'll start bending it on the template, and I'll kind of go back and forth. So I'm gonna heat this up right now, so you'll see me, you won't see me heating it up, but you will see me bending it on the template. Here we go.
So at this point, you can see we've actually got this lined up with our template. And so now what you're going to end up doing is um, sizing this up for your fittings and cutting it a little bit shorter with a Dremel or a jigsaw to get it kind of to the size that you want to be able to hook it into the fittings. Then uh, on the longer side, you'll do the same thing. Now, if for some reason by this long length that you're getting that's going to connect to a fitting at the end, if you're finding that when you're done, the longest piece doesn't align with the fitting in the radiator, you can simply reheat the bend here and just a little small, slight little adjustment to the bend will correct that one or two millimeter distance that you're out at the end. The nice thing with that is, is a very slight adjustment to that bend can create quite the adjustment to distance over that long distance. So the goal isn't to get a perfect bend every time, although you want to get it as close as you can. In this case, you can see I couldn't use the mandrel tool because it doesn't quite fit. It kind of just isn't, isn't quite fitting with the amount of distance that I have here. So again, that's what the template is for. If you draw out a template for each of the bends, you can do that. And you can even get more complicated with it and you can do three dimensional bends. So for example, if you need to do angled bends, such as this bend here, you can do that as well. Again, you can still measure it out with grid paper. You can still measure your heights and your distances to split it into two different axes and work with two different sets of grid papers depending on the uh, angle and the axis of your bend. So grid paper is one of my favorite ways of mapping out and templating a bend so that you can get it pretty much where you need it just about every time. So as you get more comfortable with different diameters of tubing, uh, different thicknesses of tubing and different types of tubing, you'll kind of get a good feel for how much radius there has to be in each bend. And you'll be able to start doing bends freehand. You'll actually find that freehand in a lot of cases is better than using a mandrel tool. So when you're done with your bend, remove your cord, and then you're gonna to wanna to measure and cut the length. So as you're lining this up to your fittings, you'll probably end up cutting maybe around here and maybe around here to fit that into my scenario. So when you're cutting, you wanna use for acrylic, a hacksaw or a Dremel tool. I prefer the Dremel. Uh, and then when you're done, you want to sand the edges. So once you've got it cut and you've got it sized and it's fitting into your right around where you want it for the fittings, before inserting it into the fittings, you want to actually sand the edges off so that you have a nice smooth edge so that you're not wrecking the O-rings on the fittings and causing yourself premature leaks. So to create a nice chamfer edge on the edge of the tubing, you'll need some sandpaper. So what I like to do for a nice chamfer edge is start with a 230 grit sandpaper and sand the edge at about 90 degrees all the way along the edge. You want to do that till you get a nice edge on your tube. So what you're looking for is where you kind of have now, instead of a rough edge, you've kind of got this nice slant on the edge of the tube, all the way around the tube. Now the 230 grit leaves that pretty rough, so we're going to want to use a 1000 grit to smooth that off. So here we have the 1000 grit sandpaper. We're just going to do the same thing. We're going to go around the edges to smooth that out. It should feel smooth on your finger when you're done and there should be no rough spots left. And if you want a really smooth finish, you could get a little bit of water on that sandpaper as you're doing that and that'll end up kind of even smoothing the surface even further, kind of the wet sanding. All right, so now that I have that rinsed off, you can see that there's a nice edge all the way around that's kind of a slanted edge all the way around that tube. And that's a nice easy thousand grit and so that's nice and smooth and when that slides into the o-ring it's not going to rip or tear that o-ring because the edges are completely smooth all the way around and you want to do that on both ends so that you know comparatively you've got this rough edge that could tear your o-rings but here you have an edge that's actually kind of going to slowly let the o-ring go around the tube rather than trying to tear through it so you want to put that chamfer edge on your tubing uh, anytime you do a cut and you want to make sure that that's nice and smooth. So you sand that with a 230 grit, get that edge going, and then finish it off with a 1000 grit so that it can slide through that O-ring without any issues. And just as another tip, if you're going to be cutting your tubing, grab some painter's tape. This is really good for preventing uh, scratches or preventing the tubing from getting all kind of messed up on the edges where you're cutting it. Decide where you're going to cut that tube and then wrap it in painter's tape before you make the cut. What that does is that'll protect the tube so that you don't end up getting scratches all over it. You have to be really careful with PETG tubing because it scratches very easily. It's one of the reasons why I like acrylic more than I like PETG. So there you have it. 
That's a quick double 90 using a grid paper as a template. So as a quick recap, always measure two, three, four times, as many times as it takes to find a template that you can draw either on paper or on a grid paper to get it so that you can actually compare with your template to see if your measurement is matching what you want. And don't forget to be patient with yourself. You're gonna do bend after bend after bend and sometimes you'll get it right the first try and sometimes it'll take two or three tries. That's okay. The tubing's not that expensive and realistically, the more you fail, the better you're gonna get at it. So keep trying. When you're doing your edges, make sure to sand a chamfer edge onto your tube so that when you insert it into the O-rings, you're not tearing them. And if you're gonna be cutting your tubing, use an easily removable tape, such as painter's tape, to protect the tube from any scratches or from the tube moving around, bouncing around, uh, and also to make your cuts a little bit cleaner. When you remove the tape, then you can just chamfer your edge and sand it for a nice smooth finish. So when you're first trying to bend your tubing, you may end up with a few that don't work out, and that's okay. Some of them make cool little decorations that you can keep on your desk, and some of them are just for learning purposes. So remember, if you're struggling to get your bends just right in your builds, it takes practice and it takes time. Don't get discouraged. If you're having trouble, just keep practicing. Eventually, you'll be making bends freehand with very little trouble at all. Hopefully that video can help you doing multiple bends and finding a way to be more accurate in getting everything to line up. If you have any questions or things that are challenging you in your builds, leave a comment below. Maybe I can help. As always, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next video.